Power to the Truth. This is Margo. This is Thursday, January 10th, 2019. And it is 3.53 p.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. And we're going to look at earthquakes in a little bit here. But our focus today is going to be down here in the Southern Pacific. With, I've got some articles to share with you because um, I feel like it's really uh, relevant at this point in time that we start focusing on New Zealand. And I presented an article, I think, some weeks back about the methane stores under the uh, coast, off the coast of this northern island of New Zealand. I can't remember when I did that, or if I did it, or if I was going to do it. So um, I'm going to present some articles today, and it's going to shock you. And especially the fact that there's a fracture zone running right through the area where these methane hydrates are located. And geologists are expecting this to break any time. They just don't know. And we've had some, I'll go ahead and show these earthquakes down here so that you can see why we're concerned about this area. It's a very active area seismically and um, it is on this plate um, right, it's on the line between the, uh, the Pacific plate and the Australian plate. It's right on the line where we're seeing all these earthquakes today. For instance, um, there was a 5.2 and uh, this right on that red line. Here's a 5.8 and a 4.9 all within the last 24 hours down here. And then we can see it doesn't end there. Here was a 4.7 up at Tonga that was quite deep and then up here at Vanuatu there was a 4.8 .8, and this 4.7 was 370 kilometers deep. So we're going to be focusing on New Zealand today. So we're going to come back to the earthquakes in a little bit but I just wanted to um, give the introduction of what we're going to be looking at today. So I'm going to start out with some articles and this is from Robin Westenra's blog from 2015. He posted these articles regarding methane, the, a source of, of stored methane that has been discovered and nobody's really talking about this and I, I originally found some articles on on this because I was curious about methane that's stored on the bottom of the ocean floors and it's all over the place I mean I found it down here off the coast of New Zealand I found an, um, some articles about it off the east coast of the uh, North American continent, off the coast of the United States, and it's just all over the place. So don't think that the only methane stores are in the Arctic. They're all over the place. So um, Robin's blog post is Robin Westenra dot blogspot dot com and he goes by Seymour Rocks. So I'm just going to go over this and I'll leave the links below so that people can look at this yourself. So methane emissions from New Zealand, a source of energy. Don't mention the elephant in the room. This report is from last year so it's from 2014 and represents another positive feedback identified by Guy McPherson. Okay, so methane field discovered off Gisborne Coast, a huge network of frozen methane 
and methane gas has been discovered in ocean sediments 20 kilometers to 50 kilometers off Gisborne. And this was published on August 13, 2014 by Stuff. Now let's look at <clears throat> where that is. Let's see where Gisborne is. I've got NASA Worldview pulled up. Here's Australia, and this is from today. And New Zealand is right down here. And before I kn knew Robin, I didn't know anything about New Zealand. And then, he, you know, I started reading his posts and and uh, seeing, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on down here. And so... Um, there are two islands. There's the North Island and the Southern Island. So what we're looking at is the North Island and Gisborne is right up here. Right here on the coast. And so, and I just want to go ahead and show you this. Here's Gisborne. So they're talking about this area off the coast of Gisborne about 50 to 100 kilometers out so out here somewhere but look what's going on you know what this is you know what I'm about to show you look at the ripples so this is this area is being highly beamed look at this evidence of high beaming down here so if you don't understand about beaming go back through my videos on on uh, beaming and harp rings and things like that and you'll see look 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 at this this is this is so pronounced I mean that's definite beaming it's radio frequency that the clouds are reacting to because of the the frequency and it's all over it's all over the island but it's just really easy to see right here right over Gisborne so I just thought that was interesting too okay so let's get going here a joint New Zealand German research team found 99 gas flares in a 50 square kilometer area venting in columns up to 250 meters high the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research, or NIWA, said. Methane was also found building up beneath a large landslide and being released along the landslide margin, and there were indications of large areas of methane hydrates, ice-like frozen methane below the seafloor. So remember, this is back in 2014, August, so... It's um, almost five years ago. It's four and a half years ago. The discoveries were made by a 16-member team using state-of-the-art seismic and echo sounder technology on board the NIWA research vessel Tangaroa. 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 I guess that's how I'm going to say it. The concentration of seafloor gas vents was the densest known off the New Zealand coast and the vents were in much shallower water than usual. Venting usually happened around a depth of 800 meters on large ridges in the middle of the continental slope. Nairo marine geologist and voyage leader Dr. Joshua uh, Montjoy said, in this case, venting was going on along the edge of the shelf in as little as 200 meters of water. The work is part of a larger project focused on the interaction between gas hydrates and slow-moving active line landslides. The area surveyed was known to have large active landslides up to 15 kilometers long and 10 meters thick. Now. I'm going to pause there. We've seen the the evidence of landslides with the Krakatoa volcano, so this is nothing new. So this is this is stuff that you know we need to be concerned about going on. 
Researchers were also hoping to understand whether some methane was reaching the atmosphere rather than mixing, being mixed up in the water column and consumed by biological processes as normally happened. Methane is a very effective greenhouse gas and seabed methane release has the potential to dramatically alter the earth climate. Well, that's why we're following it so closely. As ocean temperatures change, the methane hydrate system has the potential to become unstable. And speaking of ocean temperatures, let's look at Climate Reanalyzer. And this is their data for sea surface temperature anomaly is a day old. So the most recent data they have is from yesterday, January 9th. And this is Australia and here's New Zealand, and here's Tasmania, and you can see all, all this ocean all between Australia and New Zealand is in the red zone. Reds and high red and the brown zone, and then on the east coast to the east of New Zealand it's in red and brown. So this is an area to be watched and to be concerned about because like that article just said, as the sea surface temperatures rise, as the ocean temperature rises, those methane hydrates are going to start melting. And they're, they're going to be releasing. And um, it says, it would be interesting to find out whether global warming was changing the ocean system off Gisborne and causing more methane expulsion than previously. High ocean temperatures could change conditions so ice could turn back into gas. It remained to be seen whether the area off Gisborne was sensitive to climate change. We may be entering into a situation where global climate change is influencing the methane hydrate system. The researchers were also trying to understand what caused the large, slow landslides in the area. In a recently submitted scientific paper, they proposed the landslides might be the seafloor equivalent of glaciers with frozen methane rather than water ice. Alternatively, pressurized gas could be causing landslides to move down slope. One implication of if, if large landslides were found to be moving slowly rather than catastrophically was that slow landslides were likely to cause tsunami. So they got that to worry about too. Work still needed to be done to work out how much methane was coming out of the sea floor. The concentration of vents we saw is really something unique and special. We think it's going to become a major site of interest. It's very unusual to see such a high concentration in one area. Research to understand the interaction between gas hydrates and slow moving landslides is to carry on during the next decade and will indicate drilling into landslides in 2016. Good luck with that. The first part of the project is a collaboration with NIWA or NIWA GNS Science and the University of Auckland from New Zealand, GEOMAR and the University of Kiel from Germany, Oregon State University from the USA, and the University of Malta. Mount Joy said work was being done around the world looking at methane hydrates as an energy source but not but that was not the focus of the project and then this video apparently has been removed then here's another article from 3 news from June 13th 2014 by Melissa Davies per head of population New Zealand's methane emissions are five times the global average. Most of the gas comes from cattle and sheep, 
along with swamps, landfills, and fossil fuel reservoirs. So why is this natural gas so bad for the environment? The Greenhouse Gas Research Center, or GGRC, has created a machine repli replicating six artificial stomachs, like those of a sheep or cow. Scientists can feed the machine different food and measure how much methane gas is given off afterwards. There is no foul smell, but methane is accused of fouling the atmosphere by warming it. And so on and so forth. So, you can read that article. Um, so, you know, they're concerned that there's all this methane coming up down there. And, well, and they should be. But we don't see we don't see a lot of methane coming up from the ocean around New Zealand but if you do zoom in on cams and look at methane they have high readings down there and we will be looking at cams in just a second but I want to share one more article and this just came out from stuff.co.nz and it's an article from January 10th of this year by Georgia Forrester. And it's called Scientists Prepare for Haikurangi Subduction Zone Fault Line to Rupture in Future. And they're talking about that red line that I showed you earlier on USGS. It's not a matter of if the Haikurangi subduction zone will go, it's when. And that's what Kiwi scientists are preparing for. And here's a short video that's embedded here. The scientists are going out and they're going to be dropping sensors to go down onto the ocean floor to measure the movement and the uplift of the subduction zone there. Scientists are developing an emergency response plan to prepare for the rupture of New Zealand's largest fault. Well, I don't know how you could prepare for that, seriously. And you've got, you know, if this goes, the methane's going to blow. I'm just telling you, it's, it's going to be an unbelievable disaster. It will be unbelievable. Using a credible magnitude 8.9 earthquake and tsunami scenario, five civil defense emergency management groups from across the North Island are working together on the plan. Natasha Goldring, who is leading the project, said a response plan was vital in making sure people were ready and resilient for a future earthquake and tsunami event. The scenario we are using to support the development of this response plan is a very realistic example of what we could face in our lifetime or that of our children and grandchildren. Although the project is being driven by civil defense groups, people still needed to make sure they understand the risks they face and take the necessary steps to prepare themselves, Goldring said. Communities are at the center of all response planning, and we want this project to be a collaborative effort. We're all responsible for ourselves and our families. We're all part of the civil defense in New Zealand. The project's launch is in response to research over the past few years, which suggests the likelihood of a rupture may be higher than initially understood. So here's a map. Here's that northern island. <clears throat> and it says an earthquake from the Hakurangi subduction zone could devastate the east coast of New Zealand with a tsunami. The graphic illustrating a projected tsunami. So, <clears throat> so let's let's hop back over to the earthquake map because it's easy to see right here. See, they're talking about this line. And look how it crosses that 
lower island. It goes right across that lower island. So if this goes, then the lower island will have problems too. I mean, everything will be shifting and moving. It's It would be a nightmare. Plus all the methane coming up. <coughs> Let's go back to this. GNS scientist Dr. Laura Wallace said this came down to a combination of factors, including new insights from the Kaikoura earthquakes, evidence of pressure building on the fault, and geological evidence of prehistoric earthquakes on the subduction zone. A subduction zone is where one tectonic plate subducts or dives underneath another. The boundary between these two plates forms a large fault. This one in particular runs offshore from the east of Gisborne down to the top of the South Island and poses a significant earthquake and tsunami risk to the entire east coast of New Zealand. Subduction zone faults had been responsible for most of the world's deadliest earthquakes and tsunamis to date, with Japan 2011 being the most recent example, she said. So here's here's a map. It shows the Australian plate going over the Pacific plate. So when when they move, you know, when one does something, it pushes the other one either up or down. We know the Haikarangi subduction zone can produce large earthquakes and tsunamis, and these events have happened in the past. While we're carrying out more research to build a clearer picture of the hazard posed by the Haikarangi fault, we know a rupture at some point in the future is certain. For information on how to prepare for an earthquake or tsunami, visit www.happens.nz. So here's another map. Here's the northern island. Here's the southern island. So they're talking about this whole area. Here's the red line. So this whole area, and that's where the methane with the landslides, and that could be causing the landslides too, for all I know. So, you know, people who think they're going to go to New Zealand and to bug out and that it's going to be a safe place, you know, I don't think so. You know, good luck with that. And that's the end of that. I don't think there's any safe place on the planet, frankly. And that's why you need to you need to make peace with your maker and make peace with all the people in your life and get your relationships finished up and <coughs> and just face whatever's going to happen. That's my thought. Be ready to face whatever whatever it is and not be afraid and not be afraid to die. And the the problem is we're also we've been brainwashed to think that it's so wonderful to be in these bodies and we have to live at any cost. But seriously, it's it's not gonna be safe. So anyway. So I wanted to show you on cams. Now I showed you the six days of methane that was put up yesterday. And I told you that they were going to take off a whole bunch of the days. And they have. Now they're only showing from Monday the 7th and Sunday the 6th. So the data wasn't up for long. So I knew I had to record it immediately as soon as it came up so we would get it. So what I've got here just so everyone can see and we're going to keep up with this and be watching methane because it's important and this is surface level 
and this is at the uh, North Pole and if you want to zoom in and get a closer view you click on Arctic and that would get it closer in but we're going to start out up here and we can see that the methane is still being released um, all across the Arctic and see it's red up here even but look at India and China they're covered up and over here in Europe and this is even in the new color ledger so waves of methane being released so I just wanted to show you that so that you could see that CAMS is true to form that the information the data from the that week was not going to be up for long so it's a good thing we saw it when we did so now I want to oh and I forgot to show you something um, a lot of people like to see it at 500 HPA or 500 millibars and that's higher up in the atmosphere so I just wanted to show that and so we can see it collecting over the North Pole because it collects where it's colder and it's quite high at that 500 millibar level <coughs> let's let that see if that's going to load it almost looks like some beaming down through here those lines and over here I mean it's not it looks weird to me anyway you get the idea on that you can see the really dark areas and right there where we saw it coming up have the Chuck Chi Sea so while we're here I want to go back to surface level and I want to go down to uh, the Pacific view and let's look at New Zealand and since they changed the color ledger it's hard to see New Zealand it's right down here it, unless it's giving off a lot of methane it just blends in to the blue and purple down here since they changed the color ledger so I'm not real happy with that but it's the way it is so let's see what their methane is like these days at surface level for New Zealand um, we can see it's up in to the yellows and at sometimes sometimes it's totally black down there so okay we saw a spot right there that got up into the red see right there see where it's loading it does it does get up there and so on and especially on that northern island the northern part of New Zealand let's let that load it's not wanting to load up too fast here I think it's because I've got a lot open and for the most part Australia doesn't have a lot of methane because it's dry uh, but they do have it in the populated areas because methane is a product of industrial civilization and people and like Guy McPherson says you know civilization is a heat, a heat engine industrial especially 
industrial civilization. It is a heat engine. Okay, there was some red. Let's let's go back to one of the red pictures. Uh oh. And I want to do a PDF. Okay, go back. Okay, now in order to zoom into that area, I'm going to print my PDF and then we can enlarge it. Okay, so what we see here, here's that northern island and, you know, certain parts have the methane. Um, it's not much, if when you're comparing to the northern hemisphere, it doesn't look like much, just, in, just on first glance, but considering those hydrates are right over here, off the coastline and that fracture zone comes right down here and across the island they're sitting on a time bomb literally and um, and look at look at China it's just covered up even even with the new ledger China's covered up so there's that so I thought you'd find that interesting. So now let's go to our comments. Go over the comments that have come in since last night or since my video yesterday and then we'll get into earthquakes. Okay, the first one was from Dave Harris. It came in under my uh, arctic methane and uh, continued 5D's discussion an earthquake report from yesterday. Dave Harris says thank you so much Margo for these updates. I appreciate all that you do. The Antarctic sea ice loss is simply breathtaking. I fully expect a similar situation in the Arctic for the upcoming melting season. It will lead to a massive release of methane. Time is short. It's time to get our spiritual houses in order. God bless you. Well, thank you, Dave Harris, for that comment and your observations. And I totally agree with you. And God bless you, too. And um, I'm going to be doing a presentation on the Antarctic sea ice loss tomorrow. Robin Weston Run just did a blog post on it. He brought a bunch of information together and I will present be presenting that tomorrow. So I'll be going over that tomorrow. So be tuning in. So thank you Dave Harris. And then this comment came in under my extreme methane tracking video back from looks like December the 6th from Kaput uh, near-term extinction human. He says, I've been keeping a close eye on methane and global warming for years and I am in shock. I'm almost in denial as to how fast it is disturbing. I agree. I agree, near-term extinction human. It is, it is disturbing, but the climate scientists have been warning of it for a long, long time, and you know nobody took them seriously. So, and you know they tried, they tried, and you know they, you know, but it was the powers that be, it's the governments, you know, they've got their own agenda, and it doesn't happen to coincide with, with the human agenda, and the agenda for life it's so anyway I did my rant yesterday on that so 
I'm not going to rant today. So if you want to hear my rant on that, you can listen to my show from yesterday. But thank you for tuning in and, and the comment, Near Term Extinction Human. Then Valhalla56 is back, and he's been absent for a while from my channel, and he says, Power to the Truth. Right back at you, Valhalla. Power to the Truth. Good to see you back. And, that's, and then he says, Texas Gulf Coast, well, all the refineries are, has the most methane. Yeah, they've got a lot of refineries right down there for sure. And they've got a lot of methane. Then he says, I think the reason why the mainstream always uses timelines like 2050 and 2100 for negative climate effect is that the CO2 alone is not extinction level event, ELE for short. It is the mechanism of the CO2 heating the permafrost and the methane corked up in ice and freezing temps, the clathrates and hydrates that become freed from their frozen traps and rise up with the death dealing numbers, the sheer numbers of the outgassing which can release billions of tons very rapidly. This will be the mechanism of our demise, not the CO2 per se. It's like we released an evil genie out of the bottle, something really bad. Yeah, and it all plays in together. That was a good good observation, Valhalla. And it all plays in together, and then we've got the thinning of the ozone and the the whole everything. So, but methane is the big one right now that everyone wants to be watching. And Troy Turton got behind on watching my videos. His comment comes in under 5G and RF dangers, which was a couple of days ago. He says, I swear I must have missed a day somewhere. I swear the last video of yours I watched was the one before this, lol. But I swear I watched it last night, not two nights ago. I'm getting behind here and need to watch them earlier in the day instead of later at night. And, and so on. He says he nods off. and So, yeah. Um, but thanks for... Thanks for being here, Troy. We appreciate you being here and taking the time. And um, so, you know, all my videos have the date on them. And you can see the date of it, you know, when I've done it and everything. And right now, if I can keep up the pace, I'm going to do one every day. And I'll be following earthquakes every day. And I'll present some other kind of report along with it. So, keep up your health and keep up your walking, and that's good for you. And um, then, you know, we'll see you when, you when you come in, and we'll be happy for your keen observations. So, um, those are the comments from since yesterday. So, now, let's go right over to our earthquake report. And I have USGS pulled up for all magnitudes for the last 24 hours, and we're showing 206 earthquakes on the map. And to start with, so I'm going to, I hopped over to the, uh, the last 24 hours for two and a half magnitude and higher for us to start with. And our starting time on the earthquakes is 4.32 p.m. Pacific time. So we're going to start at the bottom because these will be starting to fall off soon. So the first one was a 3.4 up at Koktovik, Alaska. That was yesterday afternoon. And there was a 3.0 at Big Lake, Alaska. Then uh, 4.5 down here 
at Mexico. It was at 613 Pacific time, 34 kilometers deep. Let's look at that. That was off the coast of southern Mexico. So that didn't cause any damage. But we can see it's right on that red line there. And then, where was that? Where was I? I got lost. Okay, a couple of them fell off. Okay, just did that one. Then there was a 4.6 in India, and that was 34, 34 kilometers deep. So I think I got the ones that were going to fall off immediately. So let's just, since we're over here, um, there. let's look over here. Here's a 5.0 that happened this morning at 10.24 p.m. I mean a.m. 12 kilometers deep at near Palaikostron, Greece. Let's look at this. It looks like it was in the Mediterranean Sea. So it should not have caused any damage. So right off the Isle of Crete. Then there was another one up here. A 4.8 at 9.30 this morning. So within about an hour, within less than an hour, these two hit, uh, both on that red line. And this was in the in the water. It was 10 kilometers deep, 4.8. So that didn't cause any damage, but it's showing movement, definitely. Now, so I already showed you what's gone on down here in the South Pacific. But let's review. So here's New Zealand that we were talking about. Here's this fault line that goes to the east of the Northern Island and then crosses and goes down the west side of the Southern Island. So anything that happens with this line is going to mess up both islands really bad. And then you've got the methane hydrates down here in the ocean. And you've got beaming going on up here, too. <coughs> bad mix. That's a bad mix. So just to review a 5.2. That was yesterday at about 7 p.m. my time. Here was a 4.9 this morning at 9.11 and a 5.8 this morning at 9 o'clock. So these were, so this one, this one was an aftershock from this 5.8. So that was a big one right on the line. But those were shallow. They were 10 kilometers deep. And then this one was a 4.7 near Tonga. Now this one was very deep, 370 kilometers deep. Now that will shake, that will make plate movement when they're deep like that. This one is over near Vanuatu, 4.8 at 9.58 this morning. So that was all, I mean a lot of that was this morning within about an hour or so of each other, 10 kilometers deep. So that's all in the South, South Pacific there. Then off the coast of Japan, there's a 4.3 near the Izu Islands. And this one was very deep, 481 kilometers deep. Looks like that was in the ocean. So but it was it see it's between these two red lines and then up here at Russia Kamchatka 
which is an active region, there was a 4.7, 10 kilometers deep. That was last night at 11.10 p.m. Pacific time. See, it was right on, on land there. South America, there was a 4.5 near San Antonio de los Cobres, Argentina, 206 kilometers deep. It's in the mountains, it looks like. We can see that red line going along the coast of South America. Then, let's go up to the Dominican Republic and there's seven that are above two and a half magnitudes here. I'm going to call them off 2.8, 3.0, 3.1, 2.0, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.
but they're slowing down. There's only 28 showing here today. But, you know, they come and go. They go in waves. Now let's go to the United States and Canada. There was this one that happened right up here, just on the other side of Maine. A 3.8 happened near St. John, Canada that was 5 kilometers deep. And that happened this morning at 5.48 a.m. Pacific Time. That would be 8.48 Eastern Time. So that's not a place we normally see earthquakes. Then over here in the New Madrid seismic zone, we see two. There was a 1.3 at Ridgely, Tennessee, and a 1.2 at Tiptonville, Tennessee. So we're seeing something every day over there, it looks like. Now let's go up to Yellowstone. Well, let's hit Northwest first. All I'm seeing up here is one little tiny earthquake, a 0.7 near Richland, Washington, 1.6 kilometers deep. And then Yellowstone and Utah 3 here. Here was a 1.2 at Three Forks, Montana, a 1.4 near West Yellowstone, Montana, and then this one down here, a 1.4 near Park Valley, Utah, zero kilometers deep. So that was right at the surface. That's all up there. Now we'll, we're going to hit California and Nevada. Oh, here's another one. Um, remember we saw these down here on the border near, they called it St. George, but it was across the border in Arizona. We had another one. Uh, 1 1.4. It was 8.9 kilometers deep. This was in in Arizona. Right across the border from Utah. While we're down here, here's an explosion that caused a 2.1 magnitude earthquake south of Las Vegas and that happened at 2.25 p.m. today zero kilometers deep. They were probably blasting building but that must have been a big blast to cause that size of an earthquake. Then we're coming up here's a 1.0 at Perump and then we got some smaller ones there at Beatty. Here's, um, let's cover Nevada first. Here's some more over here at Courant. A 1.6 and 1 1.9. We, we saw some over there yesterday too. Here's another explosion. A 1.9 near Gabs, Nevada, zero kilometers deep. Here's one near Ely. Another explosion, 2.3 magnitude. They've, they're doing a lot of explosions today. 0.8 kilometers deep. It's a wonder there's no more earthquakes than that, because those explosions will cause shaking. That's all there is to it. Let's keep going. Here's a 1.4 near Fallon. Here's, um, I, I showed you that one. Here's some small ones down here. Here's one by Walker Lake, a 1.2 Hawthorne. Then these two, looks like, um, three right here at Hawthorne. See, right there, all lined up together. They were small. 
and um, we saw Walker Lake. Here's Silver Springs, Fernley. Then Pyramid Lake. And I've shown you pictures and in the water it was a 1.1 that happened last night at 9.14 p.m. 15 kilometers deep. No, nope, it was on the coast, on the edge, right on the shore. See? And there's beach sand. It's, it's just beach sand all the way around the edge of the lake. And here's the road that goes all the way around it. So that was a 1.1. .1. Now let's look at Reno and Carson City. Here was a little one, oh, 0.3 north of Truckee. So it was up there 10 kilometers deep. Reno looks good, and then down here, though, okay, and for people who watch Dutch Sense, this is the Steamboat Springs area, and this is a natural, not natural geysers, natural springs that come up, and they've actually got a little resort down there, and people go get go sit in the the uh, warm water that comes up with the mineral water and all that and you hear steamboat hills um, but they are um, they do tap those the, the uh, water coming up as part of geothermal operations and NV energy does use it to provide energy to the area this road, this Geiger grade road, it goes up up the hill up to Virginia City or up the mountain. It's not a hill. And um, this is the road. And so it looks like these earthquakes happened in the mountains there. And it's, they're calling it Virginia City, but it's not at Virginia City. So there was a point nine at eight thirty six this morning, a one point two at ten thirty three, a point nine at ten forty six, and a point seven at one forty three. They do do mining up there there are silver mines in 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 them thar hills and virginia city is known for its silver mining so they could have been doing some some digging or blasting you know doing some work on the mines or something up there that's my thought so i think that covers nevada pretty well now let's go over to California. Right up here is a 2.0 near Millville and see it's southeast of Redding, 17 kilometers deep. Nothing else that's registering in Northern California. Here's this one, a lone one here, 1.7 near Alder Springs, 3 kilometers deep. But look at the geysers. The geysers are active today. 18 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. Here's the 2.7. That's the largest one it looks like. And the others are between 0.4 and that. They're like under 1 and between 1 and 2. Lots of little ones. Here's one in the San Francisco Bay, a 1.0, 11 kilometers deep. Look at that. 
So that happened at 3.43 this morning. <coughs> right in the bay. And of course this red line is the San Andreas fault line. Here's another one. 1.5 near Gilroy. Now we're getting into these coming down. 1.6 Trace Pinos. Uh, 2.0 at Pinnacles. 2.2 at Pinnacles. And this one just came in. 2.9 at Parkfield. Now, let's go over and cover these on the east side. Then we'll do Southern California. Okay, we got the geysers. Look, here's one right in the middle of Mono Lake. Looky, looky. That's Mono Lake. A 1.6 that was 3 kilometers deep. That happened yesterday at 5.32 p.m. Then here's all of these coming in in that area in, in the Mammoth Lakes area 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0.6 here's a zero that was a m very minor one 0.6, here's a minus 0 0.1, 0 0.2, oh that was at Beatty, Beatty Here's a 0 0 0.1, 2.6, 0.8, 0.1, 1.2, 0.7, 0.5, and a 1.6. I can't see where that one is. It says Levining. I can't see it. So, there's 18 on this map area, including these little three over here. So, if we take these three off, there's 15, including this one up here in the middle of Mono Lake. So, that's an uptick in the number. Okay, now coming down into Southern California. Here's Los Angeles. Here's an a quarry blast. 1.2 magnitude, minus 0.9 kilometers deep. So that was up in the mountain or on the mountainside. That was at 10.58 this morning. Here's a 1.1 at Colton. Uh-oh. I didn't mean to do that. We don't see any down across the border. Okay, in this viewing area, there are 33. a 2.5 at Borrega Springs. I wonder if that's the largest one. It looks like that could be the largest one. Yeah. And the rest are small and it looks like they're piling up down here. Not, not that many down here at Kawea, but that's where they tend to come in, the little ones. So uh, those are all under that. So let's, I think that covers it. Uh-oh, here's one out in the ocean. A 1.6, 30 kilometers east-southeast of Avalon, California. Avalon, okay, so this must be Avalon. So, But it's to the west of Oceanside. 
and that was 17 kilometers deep and that happened at 2.54 this morning. I think that's it. Did we get this one? This one's new. This one just came in. It's a 2.1 magnitude explosion near Battle Mountain, Nevada, 15 kilometers deep. They do mining out there. Lots of lots of blasts and explosions. For whatever reason. Now let's see what else has come in since we started. We saw that two point did we see that? The 2.9 at Parkfield. I think we saw that. Yeah, we saw the Battle Mountain. Let me go up here and see what else. We've had some more come in in Alaska. Um, so here's uh, 2.9. Here we saw the Parkfield. There are two at Parkfield, a 2.9 and a 1.9. These are up in Alaska. I think we got everything. I think that's it for today, so we'll wrap it up. My name is Margo, and I advise everyone to get your spiritual houses in order because no one knows the day or the hour for when you'll be leaving this planet. And I love all of you. And until next time, God bless everyone. Go in peace. I'll talk to you real soon. Good night.